Hello! Today I'm going to talk about something maybe not practical, but fun. I found this uh, stage top by Gutshot Games. Uh, originally it was on their Kickstarter, which is what I had signed up for to begin with. And then I believe now it's available only through My Mini Factory, but uh, I'm not sure. I'll leave that in the description. But they've made this nice little gaming table that you can put together and play basically whatever games you want on it. And it's it's kind of fun. So I thought, yeah, that would be great for my D&D &D party. I like what I call the mega table, which usually involves just two uh, folding tables set up outside, pushed together. But I thought it would be cool to make a really big table to put on top of it that would have the, the same amount of grid as your large battle map. And so that's what I did. So I just wanted to walk you through kind of how this works because they're not all that easy to see without uh, seeing some of the videos. They have a bunch of different versions available. This one that I have right now is just kind of a, a, a plain uh, standard. The main things that you need will be uh, these frames and these all basically tile together with some, with some nuts, some frame locks. And then each one also has a spot for a leg and then also spots for little locks to put on your tiles. In this case I'm using a grid but there's a bunch of different types of tiles available. And then you will also hold those on with the little blocks here. So I'm just going to put one of these together real quick. They do have uh, a standard version, elite, a light, and then they have some themed versions. There's still a lot of files that they're, they're uh, releasing in waves. For everything that I need, uh, that I wanted to play with, uh, it was there. So there's frames, your frame locks, play tiles, your tile locks, um, and each of your tiles, there's a bunch of different types. There's grids, blank, uh, wood, uh, some counter wheels. They have the different rails that go along the outside. You'll have your straight, your corner. They'll have anti-corner and things like that later. Um, your legs, feet, these ones that I did, uh, the first ones before there was attachable feet, but I'll show you those later. And then you have your components, which I don't have out right now, but that gives you stuff to add like dice towers, some cups, dice trays, card trays, things like that. And then different storage, uh, the items to just kind of hold uh, all of your pieces together. It's supposed to fit all in one. Uh, they're supposed to fit in those cubby sized, I forget what you call them, the little storage cube things. Um, I don't have any of those, but if I did, I would tell you that Mega Table would not fit in an entire storage shelf of those. So. So let's just uh, kind of put this together. So you've got all these uh, frames. They lock together. The easiest way to put it together, I've decided, has been upside down. Uh, and then you put the locks on. So you can see this one already has uh, these tile, or these, yeah, tile locks in it. So you take your frame. This is the bottom. This is the top. Your tile, it should have uh, some connectors there. There's half tiles, quarter tiles, just depending on what size, the modularity that you want to do. Put your tile on there. You've got your little nuts and they have a, a little dot on there. And then you can just line it up with the arrows. Hard to do, <laughs> trying to show it in the camera. Pop it into place, twist it that's locked in and then it's easier to get all the rest in. While I'm putting stuff together, look at the the names of all these really cool people that support this channel. If you want to support this channel too, make sure you join that list by checking out the links in the description. So once you've got your tile on, then the easiest way to assemble it is upside down. And I usually do it in rows. So you put those together. I don't know if I can see that very well on the camera. Sometimes this is a little hard to get them. You want to make sure that they get together flush. Sometimes they'll be kind of ski wampus and not 
go together very easy. You don't want it to be like that, thinking that you can just start one and then it'll automatically go in. It doesn't always work that well. So just make sure that you have it nice and flush to begin with. And then you put your lock on and twist it tight. On this one, I printed the nuts the same color as the tile, but you can print anything, whatever color you want, of course, and whatever material you want as well. I did just PLA Pro, but if you want it to be stronger and you don't want to necessarily just increase your infill, you can print it out of ABS, PET, or whatever you're feeling like. Once you got all the tiles together, then I put the legs in, and since uh, I ran out of colors, not that it matters. You can print your frames in any color you want. You pretty much won't see them once it's assembled. And the legs, I also don't care that much about either. Same with your, with your, all your locks. I don't think that really matters. All the stuff that's underneath, you're not necessarily gonna see unless it's right near the edge. So if you do have these miscolored ones, of course, on your grid, put them in the inside not next to the edge. But these just twist right in. They have little um, little grooves that they kind of, you know, you, you hit the end when it kind of snaps in there. And then I take the grid and I flip it over once it's all assembled, which of course will be a little bit more difficult when you have a, a larger table. Make sure that you have some friends to help you with that. And then for the standard rails, they have the same lock on them. This is something with the light rails, I'll show you later. The light rails, they don't use this, they use the actual tile locks. So they have to leave the outer edges undone for that. But if you, if you do it flipped over and then you try and put your tiles together after it's already flipped over, it's a little bit more difficult, so I, I just do it that way. So you just assemble it there. If you're frugal, <laughs> you don't necessarily need to put all the locks on there. And then each um, groove interlocks with each other, right? So. It'll go together like that. You'll notice that as far as on the frame, they go halfway through a tile, so that's not like a frame on a, on a full tile, they go in between. So keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out how many of each piece you need for your size of table that you want. Once you have all these on, this is the standard version, and they have clips. Of course, if you want it to look nice, make sure that you order your filament in bulk so that you have the same color for everything without running out of filament. And these just snap into place. And that's it. Now you have yourself a nice little table play on. I mean, this would even be okay for a little D&D &D scene. Um, you could build your scene on this. You could just move it and then surprise the characters. Oh, now you're into a battle and here's your scene and you have all your stuff all set up, blah, blah, blah. So that's how it works. This is Mega Table. And what I did with my grid was I also put some of that whiteboard paint on it just to, you know, play with it. It, it does work for dry erase the wet erase stuff kind of leaves smudges on it. It's not too bad actually drawing across the spaces like I thought it would be, um, but still I think I'm gonna get rid of that and just use printed terrain and stuff anyway. That's usually what most people are gonna do anyway with that, but you could do that if you wanted to. I will say that it is more like resin than it is like paint, whiteboard paint. You mix the two together, it's basically an epoxy, 
and so it's really goopy. <laughs> Didn't quite go on as great as I wanted it to be. And we're also going to be playing with some people that aren't actually here, so we'll have some cameras on it uh, for those who will be playing online. And I don't really want it to be shiny, so I will end up using the smaller table that I printed second for that. But these are some of the components, okay? You've got your dice tray, card trays. You've got your components for, you could put your dice tower or cups in, in these. And these are the outside edges of my big table. And I'll show you the picture of the, the whole thing put together. I'm just gonna put a couple of these together. And as you can imagine, with components on it, it is a little bit harder to assemble the other side when they're not exactly level. See, those are really loosey-goosey. I'll explain that later. They do have legs that have holes in them. These are the second version of the light legs that you can print some TPU feet with so that they're, you know, kind of rubbery and it doesn't scratch up whatever surface you happen to be on. They snap right in, but then because it's just kind of a, a circle connection, they, they spun all over, which I didn't really like. So I ended up just gluing it in place because why not? And I'll tell you why not now, because now there's options for stacking. So you could actually, if you didn't have the foot on here, there are now uh, tiles that have the holes on them to where you can stack basically on top of your other table and I don't know exactly why you would want to do that you can't really fit a whole lot in between legs and stuff if you had like two tiers uh, unless it was just like a partial tier or something you want to play some of that 3d chess from Star Trek or something I don't know whatever but it's a possibility and that's what's cool so you'll notice on the light version, see this is kind of loosey-goosey. I'll explain that later. It's only on this table. The other table is much better. And I guess I might as well tell you right now. I wanted to save time. So instead of printing it with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I printed it with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, which cut off about an hour and a half per frame. And you know, shaved off a lot of printing time of something that already takes a long time to print. However, it's not quite as detailed because of that, if that makes sense. So if you take one of these nuts, this is a 0.6 nozzle with a 0.3 layer height, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, 0.2 layer height. You can see the difference. It's not quite as detailed maybe as it needs to be in this section. And that goes for, for both. Not necessarily on the, the nut, but also on the, on the frame. But anyway, I've noticed that between the 0.6 and the 0.4, if I do everything 0.4, the fit is a bit more snug like it should be. However, even with Mega Table, with it kind of loosey goosey, sure it's a little bit, you know, when you go to put it together and flip it over is the hard part. But once it's set up and on on, on a table, it's it's not going anywhere, so it's fine. But what I was wanting to show is the rails on the outside, so I had to leave these out because for the light rails, instead of using the frame locks, they actually go over those frame holes. And then they get locked in with a, a nut, handy dandy 3DM box, with these nuts here. And they have a little mark on them too. You can stick your nut in there and lock it in that way. So a lot faster to print than your standard tiles. See now this is, of course, off center as far as weight goes, but then you've got your components, dice tower, they just slide down through the hole. There's little notches in the tray and in the back of the tower so it has to go in at a certain spot and then just slides right back into it. 
You can't put it, put it together and then put it through. You gotta put this through first. Slide that on. There you go. The, the bad thing about the light version is when you have this, you can fit a soda can under here, but it will hit on the top of these knobs. So with the light frame, it's harder to put, I guess, taller things underneath it, but it is a little bit taller. So if you're sitting at a table, it's up higher. If you wanna be able to use your towers, they do have shorter legs that you can use, but then you'll just have to use the towers outside of the, outside of the actual table. The other components you can put in these are cups, cups and half cups, right? And they just sit right in there. And you can put other game pieces and whatever you want in there. So that's kind of cool. My mega table that I keep referring to is just my table that I made that is really big, right? Five by seven. It took about 503 hours and 30 minutes of printing time altogether for everything. It has um, just to give you some perspective, 35 sections, 35 legs, 15 full uh, one by one grids, 16 one by one halves, four of the one by one quarters, four corner components, six dice trays, some triple components, I can't remember, I think it was four triple components, eight cups, 12 half cups, 20 rails, four corner rails, of course, and then all the and the rail locks and tile locks, frame locks. That was for that one. The smaller one that I did later, that's probably more practical for most people, is a three by four. Even if you print a really giant table, you don't have to use the whole thing. You can just use whatever parts of it you want. For example, this little table that we made to start with, you know, maybe you only want this something this big on your ottoman. You might have all the components for a whole table, but you can put it together however you want, which is something I really like. The things I like, it's modular. You can use different pieces, different themes, different styles, different heights of legs. Um, it's, it's really sturdy considering what it is. And this is only with 15% infill. You can, of course, print with a higher infill and uh, different materials. It's relatively low cost as far as if you're printing one, other than your time. It's just the filament and that, that doesn't cost a whole lot. It does take quite a few rolls. If you look on their website, they'll give you estimates of times and how many rolls of filament you'll need for the different sizes of tables. But that's just something to, to keep in consideration. Depending on the size, it may not be as easy to assemble. It'll take a lot of time, both in printing everything and putting it together that my mega table took me an hour and a half by myself to put together from all the parts. It will also take up a ton of space. <laughs> sure, they'll fit in the little cubbies and stuff, but depending on how big your table is, it can easily take up a lot of space. My mega table right now is just sitting in a, a big cart because <laughs> there's nowhere really to put it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is where you're going to put it, whether it's going to be on your dining table, if it's going to be on an ottoman, if it's going to be on the floor, if it's going to be on a couple of folding tables outside, um, things like that to keep in mind. For me, I don't think it's very practical to use a lot of the storage they have. So they have storage for the, uh, the frames, for example, that you would print out. It's basically a flat base with four pegs and you stack all these frames up on it you put those on there, great. And then it has a little box thing that you can put all your tiles and your components and all that stuff in there, great. For me, I'm gonna be using basically the same setup other than where these are in the table each time. So it does not behoove me to remove all of the clips and the tiles and, and all that and put them in things just to s store it and then have to take all that time again to assemble it. So what I've done is I've made my own little crate and uh, no you can't print this on a smaller printer you have to have a medium or large size printer to print this size uh, of a crate 
And I also did this in 0.6, which is why it's kind of ugly, but doesn't matter what it looks like. It's just for functionality. And that's to hold all of my trays. So I don't take any of this stuff apart other than taking the tiles apart and legs apart. And then I just use the crate to put all my tiles in there. Um, and then I can stack up my multiple crates. I think for a mega table, it's like six crates. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, I also, because there isn't really anything out right now, and maybe there will be later, plastic tubs. There's my lock, frame locks, components. There's my rails. And of course, you've already seen I have these little printing boxes that I usually use to ship stuff, but um, all of the rail locks. If I didn't leave all of the little frame locks in the frames, I would have to have something to hold all those. For me, this makes it a lot easier. I can leave most of it together. It doesn't take as much time to take to put back together. It just stacks up right there. And I'll leave the file for this, the link to it. I'll, I'll just throw it on Thingiverse so other people can use it too. It's not anything necessarily specific to my channel or anything. I just wanted to make it easier for myself. Might as well make it easier for others as well. But that's uh, pretty much it. That's what I've been playing with for the last uh, about a month. Anyway, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. It's fun, something to play with. As far as buying or selling these, there's a commercial license you can get if you wanted to. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Maybe gave you some ideas of what you could do if if you want to try uh, one of these stage top tables out for yourself, or if you're like, you know what, yeah, it's not practical, so <laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it. But uh, leave that up to you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I guess you can print out a table.